What's up guys, how are we doing? Hope you're having a good morning so far. You gotta scull your one liter of water. Now today, I'm actually going to run through five different topics on how I made the gains that I made and the progress that I made. I'm gonna to talk to you about five things that I wish I knew sooner to get to the physique that I am now. Now, before we get into that, let me do a bit of my work, which I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna do a bit of client check-ins and then I'm gonna tell you key point number one that I wish I knew sooner. And that is to stop wasting money on magical pills that promise you results. Can't make this any clearer for you. When I started out as a lazy noob trainer, I was doing so much work in the gym and I was out working myself and it was amazing. I didn't quite see the results I wanted to see. So then I turned naturally to supplements. Now they promise you all these things, right? And you know, I bought the hype. I was like, you know what? I don't have to worry about my diet and I just take these things and I get the results. I'm gonna choose that option. Nor did I realize three weeks later, the only thing that happened was my low bank account balance and my pure disappointment in not seeing results, right? You wanna be smart about this and it is hard because the supplement industry is a billion dollar industry for a reason. They'll tell you anything and they'll exaggerate anything to get a sale. Now I'm saying there's some companies like that and there's some companies that aren't. You have to be mindful of these things that they are a business at the end of the day. When I started seeing the most amount of progress in my physique was when I put my focus into my nutrition. If you are finding trouble with your physique, the first attention you should take all that feeling of, I just want it quick and now into the nutrition side. Trust me, you'll see so much more results a lot faster when you start putting it into nutrition side of things. So with that being said, I've just completed my work for the morning. So I'm about to go cook my first meal. I'm currently and about fifth week of my prep, my bodybuilding competition prep. So I'll show you what I'm eating. It's not the most exciting, but I guess the job done. We got some rump steak. Now this is gonna go down an absolute treat. I love any kind of beef products. And on top of that also, we've got some rice cooking. Through my whole prep, the main thing that I've been having has just been rice. It's just the easiest carb source. It's easy to cook up. You can just chuck it in containers, pop it in the fridge and then it's always accessible. Let me cook this up and then I'm gonna get to topic number two. So what we've got cooked up here, we've got some steak. We've also got some rice with furikake, which is a Japanese tradition for rice seasoning. It's one of my favorite things ever. It honestly makes any sort of rice taste amazing. So highly recommend. Now I'm gonna get this feed in, get some carbs in, get some protein in, and then I'm gonna head to the gym where I'll be meeting up with my camera guy and we'll be doing some content there as well. So I'll tell you my other point on the way to the gym. Mikey T, if there's anyone in the world that I wanna be like, it would have to be Mike Thurston. I mean, look at this rig. I mean, like when I'm 30, I hope I'm looking like that. Finish eating now, so let's go to the gym. I don't wanna make dry weight, so we're heading now. Hey, can I please grab a jumbo? Ice Americano or cold brew, jumbo cold brew with two shots of sugar-free caramel syrup. Yeah, venti cold brew with two shots of sugar-free um, syrup. No worries, anything else? That's all, thank you. We got the venti cold brew with two shots of vanilla syrup. That's honestly my favorite coffee that I'll have and this is gonna be technically my pre-workout. I think I'll probably end up having a 3D as well. I've been trying to stick to the natural ways of keeping the caffeine up. Topic number two is accountability. Now for myself, although I am already a fitness coach, I actually personally have a coach for myself to keep me accountable as well. I'll give you the three reasons why accountability is one of the most important things when you're trying to get results. Number one is you don't have to think, you just do. Reason why I have my coach is because if I have to think for my own program and I'm like, I'm writing my leg days down and have a hack squat in there, I'm like, oh, it's a bit hard, I don't really wanna do it, I might skip it. Whereas if someone else like my coach who objectively looks at my goals and is trying to do the best for me, he's gonna tell me what to do. And then I don't have to let my emotions come in the way of the progress I'm gonna make. Number two is that having accountability with someone else, scientifically proven to improve your chances of success. And I'll put the study that was done just below here. You can tell that if you have an accountability partner that you regularly check in with, so you have a 95% chance of success rate of actually getting a goal. In other words, you have 5% chance of not succeeding in your goals by having an accountability partner. Now, the third reason is the sunk cost fallacy. Now, if I'm spending money 
on something that I need to work out or I need to track my progress or I need to eat well in, and I'm paying all this money to have my progress tracked and for a coach to chat to, on those days that I really don't want to train, I will most likely end up going to train because I'm spending all this money. And sunk cost fallacy, where that rule comes into play, is I don't want to see my money wasted. If I'm spending all this money on a cause like my fitness goals, I'm going to make sure that every bloody cent spent on it is worthwhile. So that's why it's good to have accountability with a coach or even someone like a friend. And that will improve your chances drastically of getting more results quicker by actually staying consistent, which is the number one key ingredient for making meaningful progress. So with that being said, I'm going to scull down the rest of this drink and I'm going to head into the gym and I'll chat to you more about what we're doing as we get in there. Another thing I wish I knew earlier before getting started in the gym, it was that a all in or nothing mindset is detrimental for progress. So say you go to gym seven days a week and you train twice a day and you're restricting every single food. Let's be real, like how long is that gonna fucking last for, right? Maybe eight weeks max and then you're gonna quit it all together and you're gonna go back to the old diet habits you had. Yeah, you might lose a couple kilos, but you're gonna gain it back just as quick as well. The best thing I heard from my coach when I was going through this phase and the same thing I tell my clients as well is it's better to be consistently good than occasionally great. So it's better to be 80%, 100% of the time rather than 100% sometimes, okay? So if you can go to the gym, say three days a week, consistently every week, and somewhat track your nutrition at an 80-20 rule without restricting any specific foods, you're gonna make so much more progress than the people that keep doing, quitting, doing, quitting. Gain weight, lose weight, gain weight, lose weight. So that's my main thing, is be 80%, 100% of the time. Consistently good, over occasionally great. guys so I just finished my upper body session and as I was training we're having a bit of fun and I was looking around the gym and I, I kind of thought of another point of you know what actually have I learned that's made my progress move even quicker or get the results that I'm, I've got today and one of them was training in ways that I'm not wasting my time now this is a big point because what do I mean by wasting time in the gym and everyone always thinks like am I doing the right thing am I doing this correctly form you know there's so much but I'm gonna simplify it as much as possible for you into three key points okay let's start with point number one is neglecting your mind muscle connection this was the biggest thing when I started training in the gym was you know if your ass is itchy you're not gonna scratch your head right if you're, say, you're training chest and you're doing chest flies, you want to make sure that your chest is engaged through the movement. If you're training your chest and doing chest flies and you can feel your shoulders more engaged than your chest, then you're probably not doing it right. So there's no point in training. You know, you want to make sure that everything and all the work you're putting in is going towards the right muscle groups. So the second point is neglecting progressive overload. Progressive overload is one of the key principles in building muscle mass. It states that whether you want to get bigger, you're going to have to lift heavier consistently over time. Now, thinking about the evolution of humans, how we went from monkeys throwing feces to become civilized human beings, it was the external factors that changed around us that we started adopting and becoming this new civilized human being. Same sort of concept with the training is that every time we train hard, we keep lifting heavier, our body adapts to it, creates these micro tears, we regenerate from it, and then we become bigger and bigger and bigger. And my third point is no pain, no gain isn't always true. In fact, if you're training to failure every single time, every single set, you're actually more prone to injure yourself. So an easy way I like to say it is train to RIR, which is reps in reserve, maybe one to two most of the time, and occasionally do the full until failure reps. And then that way you'll be maximizing your potential for building as much muscle as possible 
and not creating that chance or opportunity for injury. So I'm absolutely starving. So I'm gonna go personally get some food and I'll catch you in the next section. You can see behind me, I've just gone out of my car. We've gotten to the walk spot. So here is my favorite place in Brisbane. It's called Kangaroo Point. So I'll just give you a quick view of the place. You got the boats, you got the river, you got the view, you got the city view. It's the most beautiful place. You can relax and um, today, yeah, I'll be doing my 11,000 steps here. But before I get into my 11,000 steps, I'm gonna give you the fifth and final thing I did that helped me make so much progress and stopped me wasting time in the gym. And that is to eat in a surplus. Now, there's a reason why I go to the gym now and I see so many skinny teenagers that have been maybe training for months or years and they look the exact same as when they did when they started training. And that's because they're not eating in a surplus. Now, let me make this surplus thing, if you haven't ever heard it before, as simple as possible for you. A caloric surplus is when you are eating more than your body is burning. Now, last time I checked the laws of the universe and Dr. Hawkins spiels, you can't make something out of nothing, right? So you need to have some sort of energy inside of you in your body, additional energy to create towards building your new muscle tissue. Now, this is where it gets tricky, obviously. Well, Anton, how do I eat in a surplus? Well, the first thing you need to do is you need to head to a calorie maintenance calculator. Now you go here, you put in your information, your age, height, weight, how much, how active you are on a day-to-day -day basis. And from here, you can create your maintenance calories. Now you wanna eat anywhere between 10, five to 10% over this amount. And depending on how much activity you do in a day, your maintenance calories will increase as well. So try and eat about five to 10% more than what your maintenance calories are to ensure you're in a surplus and you're gonna be building some kind of muscle because the last thing you wanna do is train as hard as you want and make no gains. So with that in mind, I am going to go now for a walk at this beautiful scenery behind me. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, give it a like. I will see you in the next video. Make sure to let me know what kind of other video topics you want me to make some stuff on and I'll make sure to get back to you. So with that, peace, enjoy the rest of your day.